I've been getting a ton of questions about living in Naples, Florida. So I decided to make this video so I can take you on a journey of discovery along with me. We're gonna cover the best neighborhoods, the best schools, the best beaches, bars and restaurants, and the not so normal things you could do here in Naples. You're not gonna find this information anywhere else on YouTube, so make sure to join a culture family and hit that juicy red subscribe button right now. Okay, so first let's get started with neighborhoods. I wanna to talk to you about the three most exclusive locations inside of Naples. So number three on our list is the Maureen's Coquina Shores location. I am no expert in any of these places that I'm gonna talk about, but I did a lot of research. So this is what I have found. It's actually rated the number three in all of Naples, number 96 in all of Florida. There's a very low chance that you'll be involved in any crime there. Out of 169 people, only one person will be involved in any situation whatsoever. And not only that, but the home price in this area, you ready for it? 735,000 is the medium home price in that location. Not exactly cheap, but there are some more expensive areas and we'll get to, into that in just one second. Our number two ranked location is Park Shore. Now, Park Shore is ranked 64 in all of Florida as far as neighborhoods go. The crime rate is a little bit higher here, believe it or not. For every 112 people, one person will be involved in an incident. The medium home price in this location, ready for it, $751,000. Okay, just a little bit higher than number three, but wait till you hear number one. The number one location in all of Naples is Aqualine Shores. This place is ranked number 54 in all of Florida combined out of all the cities and not only that but the crime rate here is only one out of 144 people are affected by it so not that bad the median home price ready for this 1.235 million dollars a lot of money much more money than i care to pay for a house right now but i will tell you these houses are amazing they have boat slips in the backyard and god knows what else they have but as i'm driving by these homes because i never really had the opportunity to go through this neighborhood until i did the research here I was just taken back. I mean, I'm telling you, my neck was hurting from looking at so many damn houses. But hey, if you got it, you got it, right? You can't get buried with it, so might as well spend it on a house in Naples. But believe it or not, Naples is pretty diverse. Not all the locations are by the shore. There's actually some locations in eastern Naples that's very country-like, and you can get homes with a few acres for under $400,000. And if you're looking for something even cheaper than that, well, you might be able to find something because Naples is actually 3.8% less expensive than the national average. If you're looking to see what areas in Naples might work for you, well, I'm leaving a complete description down below of all the zip codes in Naples broken down by the average home prices. So check it out down below. If you're liking this information so far, guys, smash that like button so we can get this video in front of more people. All right, so now let's talk about schools because this was a really important factor for me before I came to Naples. So you wanna make sure that your kids are actually in at least an eight or above. And in my opinion, I wanna have my kids in at least an eight or above. You wanna make sure your kids are always in the best opportunities possible. So now I'm gonna break it down for you by elementary first, then middle school, and then high school. So you ready for this? Pay attention. Number one, Seagate. Seagate is a 10 out of 10. Then we got Mason Classical, remember that name. Then we've got Lake Park, Naples Park, Vineyards, Pelican, Laurel Oak, Corkscrew, Osceola, Estates, and Veterans. Yes, there's a lot of elementary schools. Like I said earlier, Naples is a huge city. Now let's move on to the middle schools. These are the eight and above. Middle schools, we have Mason Classical, yet again, North Naples, and Pine Ridge. These are all eights, nines, and tens. Now we're gonna get into the high schools. And believe it or not, this is where it starts to get a little bit more tricky. High schools, all of these are rated above an eight. Mason Classical, this was in all the categories so far. Gulf Coast, and we have Lorenzo Walker Tech. All right, so as far as school goes, that's what you need to know. If you're okay with a six or seven because your kids are grown and they're not in school anymore, you can get some pretty great deals in the lower part of Naples as well as some other sections if you're not looking for schools. But if you are, make sure you look at these schools in these areas first. Now let's talk about one of my favorite things, which is beaches, the best beaches in Naples. And Naples has a lot of them. As a matter of fact, they have some of the best beaches in the entire United States. Now let me talk to you about one that I had the opportunity to visit for the first time while doing the research for this video. And it's called Delanor Wiggins Beach. And it's actually a county park, who would have known? 
you um, pay to go inside because in most county parks you do. So for myself, I only had to pay, I think it was like $3, three or $4 uh, to go in myself with my car. But the great thing is you don't have to pay for parking once you're in because you just pay to get in. If you have a car full of people, I think the most you pay is $8. So pretty good there because you don't have to worry about parking all day. And parking in Naples can be pretty expensive. I think it's like two fifty for a half an hour or an hour. Or so. No, it's two fifty for an hour. And in some places it's even more than that. So once you're there, you're going to see you have options to go to five different picnic locations slash beach locations. My personal opinion, my favorite was the last one, number five. You can go all the way to the end. And it's the reason I like it is because it's more secluded. And if you walk around the uh, boardwalk, and the, yeah, I think it was a boardwalk. If you walk around the boardwalk that's been abandoned, you have a whole big private beach where the actual fresh water from the inlet and the ocean meet. Really beautiful. I loved it. The other great thing about this beach is that it also has a lagoon side. And on the lagoon side, you can actually uh, bring your jet skis in or you can bring your boat in. You bring your kayaks in or you can just fish off the dock. Really cool. I like it. I, I think it's probably my favorite one so far that I've seen. If you're looking for uh, a place that you can go, maybe barbecue some meat and uh, have a, a whole day of it and have some shade as well. Really nice place. Now, number two beach that I'm going to talk to you about is actually another one that I probably, the one I go to the most because it's the closest to my location. And I just call it Beach Access because it's actually located on 5000 Gulf Shore Boulevard in Naples. The reason I like it so much is because it's extremely clean. They have a shower and everything right there as soon as you get off the beach. Beautiful path that you can walk right down into the beach. And you can just walk for miles. Yeah, actually, I, I have. I've, I've ran on that beach almost, I would say, at least a dozen times already. And it's beautiful. And the water is always very, very calm. And there's hardly any seaweed at all or anything like that. It, it doesn't get as crowded as the main beach does in Naples. I know a lot of people like going to the pier, which is cool. Going to the pier is nice once in a while if you want to fish off of there, you want to take some pictures. But I will tell you this, a lot of people from outside of Naples, that's where they go. So it gets really crowded. Sometimes you get people drinking on the beach, but if you want to be a little bit more secluded, maybe with the kids or you just want some time where you can read a book and not have to be kind of inundated with people all around you, plus the parking is really difficult by the pier, you want to check out the public access where I just mentioned. The third beach I want to talk to you about is Lodermilk. Lodermilk was one of those uh, places that I wasn't sure what it was at first because it is a park, but it's also a beach. So when you first park, you can actually hang out right there because they have things for kids to do. They have a couple playgrounds, they have some volleyball courts, they even have some food vendors there for you to eat. But if you want to go on the beach, you just climb right over the hump and you're right there on the beach and a beautiful beach it is too. They also have cabanas there that you don't have to pay for. You can just get there nice and early and put your chair under that cabana and you're just steps from the ocean. Beautiful location. Now, one of the things that Naples is not known for is having a nightlife. So what I did was I was able to research and find out if there's anything to do after nine o'clock because that's the time that most places close down. As a matter of fact, there is. I found a place called Cava Nectar Bar and I was intrigued by this because I wasn't sure what it was. So I actually went on location for you guys so you can check it out. If you ever come down here and you want to spend some time out, this is a cool place for you guys to go. It is a bar. Well, kind of. You're going to see exactly what I mean right now. Harry, thank you for having us here. Yeah, Tell us a problem. little bit about uh, the kind of drinks you guys serve here because I'm completely confused. Uh, tell me more about it. Well, it's definitely a new thing. Not a lot of people know about it. Yeah. We serve two different types of drinks. There's kava and there's kratom. Right here, we have uh, kava. Uh -huh. And we'll just do a quick bula okay. between us two. Cheers. This bula is, is like typically, cheers. it's cheers, okay. Pacific Island cheers. So bula nice. shells up. Boom. So tell us about this, what is this? Oh, this is a root from the Pacific Islands and they grind it up into a little powder and we took it in a bag, squeeze it with some gloves mm -hmm. and you get a nice, I described it as spicy water a little bit. Yeah. It's got a little bit of a tongue mm -hmm. numbness to it but you get a cool body high relaxation. Was that supposed to like chug it? <laughs> you, you can down it, you can sip <laughs> it. No, aware, the beautiful thing about kava is you really can enjoy it any way you like. And here's a Kratom drink for you. Uh -huh. This is our lattice tea. What's cool about Kratom is there's actually a few different strains. You get the red strain, which is a de-stress, relaxation, good for pain, good for insomnia, that type of a okay. thing. Uh, white is gonna be your energy strain, and that's just good for getting work done. Then you have the yellow strain. That'll be for focus and like a 
acuteness and mm -hmm. mental acuity. Green, finally, is the euphoria strain, and that's the one that you go out when you want to party with your friends and oh, have really? a good time. Yeah. Okay, so if I came here on a, let's say on a weekend, right? You guys are you guys are open pretty late, right? Because that's unusual for Naples to be open to one or two in the morning. We are an anomaly in that yeah. sense. We definitely are up here here till one mm -hmm. and usually the parties go until just about one okay so it's a really good time is there a limit to how many of those drinks you can have before you up for three days straight <laughs> no typically typically people drink it every day and they'll yeah. have a few a day and they don't have any issues i i treat it like coffee so your your concept here is basically a place you can go to that you don't have to drink alcohol but you can still go out have a nightlife and not Absolutely. wake up the next day regretting that you exist oh. right. yeah no there's <laughs> i've never woken up after drinking kratom or kava mm -hmm. feeling Poor at all. Okay. It's nothing. It, honestly, I feel a little bit better. Well, let's let's try this. This is the kratom, Please right? Do. This is kratom. This is the white string. This is the green. Green string. So this okay. is the euphoria. You're gonna be feeling good today. Oh, I'm gonna feel good, huh? Yeah. You might have a you might have a customer for life. <laughs> yeah, it's really good. It's like a very light fruit juice. Yes. There's very, a little. Nice. We we brew with a little bit of cinnamon, a little mm -hmm. bit of lemon that in the kratom. Good stuff. So there's some notes of that, but you've got yeah. lemonade in there, some mint. I'm not just saying this for camera, but I really like the drink. Yeah. The cream is really good. It's I can see myself tasty. coming here, working from here. Daytime, we like to describe ourselves as a coffee shop, mm -hmm. low-key vibe. I play some chill music. Yeah. And then at night, the girls bring the lights down low, turn the music up, and it gets pretty, oh, pretty man. live. So okay. there's a cool duality there, and it's a really nice place to hang out. Well, there's a lot of people watching who are interested in coming to Naples and visiting Naples. Where would they be able to find you? Where are you guys located? The easiest way to find us is probably just straight through Google. Yeah. And if traffic's not too bad, five, ten minutes from downtown. Yeah. It's a really nice location. I'll link it down in the, in the description section. I'm telling you, it's only been a few minutes and I'm starting to feel it. Yeah, no, feel you'll feel it. And that yeah. stuff's in you for a good few hours, so wow. it's well worth it. Awesome. Well, thank you, Harry. I yeah, appreciate absolutely. it. Absolutely. Appreciate place is your awesome. time. Check it out, guys. Next to Labs. Thank you, brother. I really love the vibe at this place. If you guys are ever in town, check it out. I promise you, you won't be disappointed, especially if you go there on a Saturday night. I believe they have a jazz band and sometimes they even have them on Sunday nights. So always call ahead to see what they have going on for that evening. But I truly recommend it, guys. It was something special. Next, I want to take you to a place that you can take the family to eat and you're not going to break the bank. And the food is amazing. I had the opportunity to go to Brooks Gourmet Burgers. This place has been around for a long time. And when I looked at the reviews for a place to go and check out, well, this place had thousand plus reviews. So I said, there's got to be something here. And I went there and it did not disappoint. Let's check that place out right now. Today, we're at Brooks Burgers in Naples, Florida. And we're going to see what all the fuss is about. We ordered something I probably wouldn't order normally, but just to try it out so you guys can see if it's good or not. I asked the waitress what is the most popular burger here, and she mentioned they have a burger with cream cheese and jalapenos. And we also ordered the wings because I can't go anywhere without having wings, so I'm gonna try that out as well. And we got the cold slaw, which I'm a big fan of. So let's dig in and I'll let you guys know whether it's worth the trip. Ooh, that's a good burger, look at that. Oh, it's really good. Oh, it's a healthy burger. Wow. But this is really good. Now let's try the wing. Let's try this wing. That's a good burger for real. I'm not just saying that. that's a pretty good burger. I like these wings because they're not, they have a little bit of crisp, southern, southern crisp to it. You see that? We got the spicy sauce. See how that looks together, how that goes. That's addictive. That is, that is good. Let's try the coleslaw. Got some walnuts in there too, just like Mama used to make. All right, so so far, two thumbs up. I love it. Can't wait to come back and try the other burgers. I'm kind of like a burger snob, and that burger, I'm telling you guys, was definitely top ten. All right, maybe even closer to the number one position, but definitely come and check them out whenever you're in town. I promise you. Oh, you know what? And the chicken wings. Oh, the chicken wings were serious too. So check them out as well. And don't forget the chicken wings. Chicken wings. Hot dog in Don't forget that, okay? We need that. Okay, so now let's talk about some of the things that you can do in Naples. Obviously, we all know we can golf, we can go water sports, we can do sightseeing. By the way, before you do any of those things, always check Groupon because you'll find some really good deals on there. Today, we're gonna talk about a couple different things that you didn't know Naples was famous for or things you can do in Naples. One thing that you're gonna notice is that Naples is known as actually the, the world headquarters or capital of the world for a sport called pickleball. Pickleball is like a crossbreed between tennis and ping pong. 
Uh, pretty awesome looking sport, uh, but they actually hold the world championships here. So if you're into something like that, you want to try something new, you can definitely go to one of the many pickleball courts they have here in Naples and have um, some fun with it. Just make sure it's not 110 degrees on the court that day. The next thing I want to talk to you about is Swamp Buggy Races. Now this is crazy. It's basically like a Formula One boat and an ATV had a kid. So it can actually run through mud and it could also float in water. And the reason why this vehicle even exists is because in, earlier in the turn of the century, early 1900s, when they first started to kind of like populate this area in the Everglades, they needed a vehicle that they could both work during the week, but on the weekends they could also take it shopping or go to church. So they gave birth to this thing called the swamp buggy. And what they do is they basically drag race it on a swamp pit and hey, the winner is the one who gets there quickest to the end of the finish line. Lastly, Naples has a lot of culture. A lot of people don't know this, but it's actually home to a Philharmonic, Baker's Museum, and it also has a section called the Theater Zone. So if you guys are into things like that, this is also something you're going to want to check out. I had the privilege of going out there and taking some footage from outside of the museum, and the place looked amazing, and it's very well kept, and it's a stone throw away from shopping and from the beaches. So here's my question for you. If you guys ever come down to Naples, which one of these activities do you see yourself doing? Leave it down below in the comments. If you're still thinking about moving to Naples or Florida and you still have questions, leave it down below in the comments section. As for me, the number one thing that I've learned while I've done all of this research is that Naples is actually not as expensive to live as you may think it is. It's not just for the ultra rich. Anyone with a decent income can enjoy great quality of life here. If you're still interested in finding out how much it costs to actually live in Florida, well, I have a video on the screen right now where I outline exactly that. But before you go, give this video a like, subscribe, and join the tribe, and we'll see you over there in just one second.